A reading now from John's Gospel, the 14th chapter. Listen now for the word of the Lord. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. The Apostles' Creed. Very important aspect of our belief in Jesus Christ, it is, when we affirm that Jesus ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God Almighty. Jesus is one with God. We're taught today in our scripture reading, Jesus is God, and Jesus is with God. Now, having said all of that, we could end the sermon right there today. But perhaps I won't. You got excited there for a moment, I know it. But there really is a little bit more to say, so I will say a little bit more. First of all, I do want to extend a very special Mother's Day uh, to all of our spiritual mothers in the church. As Don said, we have many mothers, uh, many uh, women who are spiritual mothers to us, and uh, we want to thank you and honor you today. Wish that we could be together to do so, uh, but we pray wherever you are, you have a blessed uh, morning and a blessed day. Uh, but we're also talking about a spiritual father today because Jesus uh, the Son talks about his father a lot in our passage in John. This is a very important discourse, and to understand how important it is, we have to recognize where in, this, where in John's gospel this passage takes place. In fact, he's just washed his disciples' feet after the Last Supper. See, Jesus knows he's about to be betrayed. He knows that the next day he will die, and his three years of time 
of, of ministry and fellowship with his disciples are about to end. And so he's leaving them with some very important words that adds poignance, that adds weight to the things he's saying. These are some of his last words he will speak to them before his death. And so he takes the time to say to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And then he assures them that they have a place in heaven. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And you will know the way, he says, to where I am going. He's trying to reassure them that in time things will be well. That they will know the way to go through life, the way to find Him, the way to eternal life, the way to the Almighty God. But human doubt creeps in as it always does, right? And Thomas and Philip, they have their moments of doubt and they ask Him, how can we know the way? And Philip says, well, Lord, show us the Father and then we can believe. And Jesus talks them through both of those things. He says, To Thomas, who asks, well, how can we know the way? He says, I am the way. I am the way and the truth and the life. So Jesus is our way. And then, of course, we have this wonderful response to Philip. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. And he goes on to give one last wonderful Peace of encouragement. Response to Philip's question. And by the way, Philip's or Jesus' response, you know, have you been with me all this time, Philip, and still you don't know me? It reminds me of that song. If you don't know me by now, you'll never, never, never know me. We who know Jesus know the Father. If you don't know Jesus, there is still time, unlike with the song. But how much time? For the disciples, time is drawing near when Jesus will be taken from them. And so again, he offers them an encouragement. He says, anyone who believes in me will do the works I do, and even greater works. And anyone who prays in my name will have his or her prayer answered. Why? Because Jesus is going to the Lord God Almighty's throne, where he will sit on the right hand of the Father. The Son and the Father together, and the Son indeed is our judge, a merciful, gracious one who forgave even those who were killing him, And he is the one who intercedes on our behalf so that when we pray in Christ's name, he carries that request to the Father who grants it. That's the image we're given in John 14. The image of a son who has the ear of an almighty father. Reminds me of a story that I heard a few years ago and uh, have shared and I want to share it with you again. There's a, a, a young man who was from New York and uh, was a soldier during the Civil War. He wished to return to his family. You see his uh, two brothers and his father had been killed in that war. And he was concerned about his mother, whether she would be able to make it through harvest. Uh, there was no one to help her. And so he asked his captain if he could return home to help her just through the harvest season, and then he would return back to the army. He promised. Well, the captain said, I don't have the authority to give you permission to do that. And so he asked him who would. (laughs) With his captain's permission, he actually journeyed to Washington and sought... Uh, the approval, the authority of the greatest authority in the land, uh, President Lincoln. And he walked up to the White House and began uh, mounting the steps there and was met by a guard who asked him what his business was. 
And he told the guard his situation. And the guard said, son, the president can't see you today. And besides, lots of people have lost loved ones in this war and face many hardships. My advice is to go back to your unit, serve your mother, your president, and your country. Well, the young man was devastated. He turned and walked away. And while he was walking through the streets of Washington, D.C., a young boy saw him, and saw his depressed look on his face and asked him what was wrong. He told the boy about his situation. And the boy said, I think I can help you. Follow me. And so he walked with the boy. The boy took his hand, walked him back to the White House, up the steps into the White House, past the guard that he'd just spoken with, down the hall and directly into the Oval Office of the United States. The two walked into the office without even knocking. Abraham Lincoln, looking, uh, working at his desk, looked up and said, Yes, son, what can I do for you? In just the same way, we have access to a powerful father through a generous son. So pray. Pray and trust because God is good and Jesus intercedes for us. Well, surely the sermon can be over now, right? Not quite. I wish it were that simple. But there is another angle to this. You see, God does answer our prayers, and Jesus assured us of this. But a wise soul has once said that sometimes God's answer to our prayers is yes, and sometimes God's answer to our prayers is no, and that may be because what we pray for is really not good for us or for others, or that it wouldn't glorify God. And sometimes the answer to God's, to our prayers is not yet. And oh, how we hate getting that not yet answer, right? Jesus prayed that the cup would pass from him, that he wouldn't have to go through his trial and his time on the cross. The answer to that prayer was no, because that was what we needed for God to reach out in love for our sins to be washed clean of us. Now, these words of Jesus, you know, when he says, anything you ask in my name, they, they may sound like it's all going to be great. It'll be the best ever you'll see. Yeah, right. Right. Empty promises we hear a lot these days. Jesus' words are not empty promises. He's not claiming that we will face no hardships in life. He's not asserting that we won't ever suffer or go through our own times of trial. And so the current crisis that we face is no proof that God isn't real. It's no proof that God isn't still engaged or concerned about us. And it is not proof that Jesus isn't still interceding on our behalf to the Lord God Almighty. Hardship doesn't mean that God is absent or doesn't care. In fact, for the Apostle Stephen... In his time of hardship that we heard about when Don read a little while ago, you know, his cup was not removed either. He faced persecution for his faith in Christ. But he was given an image that sustained him. What image was that? It is the very image, not coincidentally, of Jesus at the right hand of the Father God Almighty an image that filled him with the Holy Spirit so richly 
so deeply it sustained him through his suffering and trial. And he was even compelled to pray to God that those who persecuted him, were stoning him, would be forgiven for their sins, just as his Lord and our Lord did pray that those who had put him on a cross would be forgiven their sins. Friends, hardship doesn't disprove God or the goodness of God. COVID-19 doesn't disprove God or the goodness of God. In fact, if we look carefully, you and I, we will see acts of kindness and generosity and love and self-sacrifice that, that are, to me, greater evidence of a God that does love, of a Son that still intercedes and who taught us to love no matter the cost, going to the cross Himself to show us that love. And who loves us still. Take heart, friends. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus is with the Lord. He is the Lord. He and the Lord are one. He will show us the way. He is the way. Amen.